welcome to Voices. Uh, we have been uh, away for about two weeks, um, and there were two weeks that we needed, so we, we took them. But we're glad to be back, and uh, within the past two weeks, a lot of things have happened. I don't know that we can cover all of them, but definitely uh, we would, we would, we would you know, take on as many issues as we can in, uh, in the time we have. Um, but, but we're glad to be back, and uh, Rogers, I want us to start this conversation with, uh, with school resumption, which was supposed to take place today. Today is, uh, today is September 4th, 2017. I checked, I looked at the internet, and I, I, I watched a video from Victoria, and uh, they drove around town, and there was no school going on. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw pictures of I don't know if it was gendarme or military people clearing the grass in, uh, in Sacred Heart College, uh, which was last week, I think towards the end of last week, mm -hmm. which gave me a clear indication that the Sacred Heart was not ready for school. Uh, I also saw another secondary school, a bilingual secondary school somewhere, and uh, the grass was through the roof and the school was never even prepared. In fact, there were goats running around the place in, 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 in classrooms. So that also t tells me that our people have not been ready for school. They are not going back to school. Um, I don't know if you've, you've, you've done any, any observation, observations. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the people have said that their business has not been taken care of. And for that reason, they are not going to send their children to school. They are not going to send their children to school while other children are locked up in Konengi and other dungeons in La Republic. They are not going to send their children to school when, other, when some teachers and some parents are sitting in the jails of La Republic. They are not going to send their children to school to be taught by the French-speaking recruits who have been deployed uh, in our territory to dilute our education and undereducate our children. Mm -hmm. So they have taken account into all of those things and they have said the requests that the, the consortium, Tasang and the rest, are demanded of the government, all what the government has done has been to lie to them. Like they lied, they have always lied to them before. So they are not going to take that anymore and they have resolved that everything is going to happen when they are satisfied, not when La Republic or fake CRTV goes out and tells them that, well, oh, this is happening this year. You know, and communication has been very instrumental in this struggle because people can see for themselves what exactly is happening in Biami or what is happening in uh, Alatuma, or what is happening in Kijom, anywhere in the, in the, in the, in the territory. Mm -hmm. So you cannot come CRTV bring some some old pictures and begin to tell people that oh this is what happened in, in Bamenda town today. I mean th there was one school in Old Town that I saw, the Minister of Basic Education, I don't know what that the name of that ministry is. But the minister was there and there were some two miserable children or three miserable children sitting in class. So the people have clearly said that they are not satisfied with whatever like Republic, the cosmetic like Republic is saying the indigenous of La Republic are not going to come back and lie to them anymore. You know, you even saw some attempts to go around distributing books, like you, you mentioned clearing of schools. There were attempts to distribute books. When have all these desperate parents been receiving money for books or books in order to send their children to school? This they is, always bought their books. They always bought their books. So this is just an attempt to try to bribe people, to buy people's conscience. But the people are bigger than that this time around. Before we come to why they are trying to get schools going, let's let's look at some of the the um, the efforts that were done uh, last week in order to intimidate the people to to go back to school. Obviously, coupled with Ghost Town, and I'm talking about what Ndumunji was trying to do in Bamenda. Mm -hmm. uh, before we talk about this Ndumunji, I think we should define who Ndumunji is. Ndumunji is the government delegate for Bamenda. And the idea of government delegates came in order to take power away from, from the elected mayors 
that were actually elected by the people. Mm -hmm. So that's a government imposition. And when we talk of a government imposition, we talk of a government that is that has never been legitimately elected by the people. And a government that represents the French government. And the French government is a genocidal government in Africa. They were responsible for genocide in Rwanda. They were responsible for genocide in, 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 in the Bamilke and, and Basel lands in La Republique. So you're talking of a so so all so Ndumunji actually represents genocidaires, if you want to use the French word for it, because I think I think the French word is the most appropriate word for it because they are the people who have been going around the world causing genocide, especially in Africa. And so Ndumunji represents a genocidal government that hates Africa, the only uh, colonial power that is still in Africa. And so when you hear Ndumunji talking to our people and talking as rude as he was, he's not representing anybody but a foreign power which has dehumanized us by taking away our sovereignty. No, he, he is representing Yaoundé and he is representing the colonial mindset that our people have rejected because you see he talks with arrogance he talks with some kind of air of um, uh, superiority he tells the people that he has the authority to lock the sheds and lock up the market and he's going to go after the leaders in the market i am glad he said that because now the people know that if anything happens to one of those people that he calls leaders in the market the people are going to hold him and his family responsible for the safety of those people. So those, those are, they call people terrorists. That if that is a threat to the lives of those people. No, he represents a terrorist government in Africa. Yes, he, represents they, a terror, they, he represents a terrorist government even in La Republic of Cameroon. Yes, so they are the ones terrorizing the population because people have the right to say they are not going to open their market and you are not going to be threatening their lives that if they don't come and open the market or talk to the, to, the, to the traders to come and open the market, something is going to happen to them. Those are threats. And those threats come only from terrorists because you don't want to do what the terrorists want. Yes. So who is a terrorist here? No, they are the terrorists and they've demonstrated uh, their terrorism by, by kids using Android phones and exposing them. And that's one of the things that has totally handicapped... Uh, I hate to call them a government. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things that has totally handicapped the government of the Republic because all they knew was force. They trained their, their, their police and their gendarmes to go out there and be masters in the territory against their people, which is what colonialists do. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so that's what... So, but, but, but I think the good news about all these savages ruling us is that our people have come to know them and they've known the, the good medicine to give them. Yeah, and the people told him in that his meeting that he called because he told the people that the orders were coming from the highest authority in the land. And the people told him, go to that your highest authority in the land and tell them that you need to release all the people that you adopted from Bamenda and Boya and Kumba and all over the place and talk to your only wherever they are holding them. And you need to account for all of those that you don't have. That is what the people told him to go and tell that his highest authority. So the people that they are seeing through that, they are not going to be bullied or intimidated anymore. Yes, yes. And, and that is very important because what our people need to continue to know is that they are the only creative force in that place. Nobody is going to make them do anything that they don't want to do. They can come with guns, they can do anything, but if they say no to it, that will be the end of it. Now, uh, one of the tactics that they've used is... Uh, is to take away the leadership that the people chose democratically democratically or any other way in order to be the only controlling force in the place and so that is why they arrested uh, the the consortium leaders that's why any leader that has come to lead our people is either bribed killed or exiled mm -hmm. and so right now the people are leaderless but they've gotten the message so android is is the is the command center where we pass on messages on what to do, right? Correct. The other group of leadership has come from the diaspora. And Dumunji was saying that, that the people in the diaspora, the people in the territory shouldn't be listening to people in the diaspora because they're living on the streets. Have you ever lived on the street? <laughs> well, I am. Um, you know, it just shows how 
you know, when you don't have something to say, right, you can come up with innuendos like that. But let me remind him that the government delegate position or whatever he calls himself in the Bermuda Urban Council has some uh, uh, garbage collection trucks. And those trucks were donated by, I think, a council in Holland, the government in Holland, to his predecessor, thanks to the efforts of those people who live on the streets in Holland. So when he says those things, he does not even know what he is saying. Maybe he needs to get out of his bubble, his public bubble, to understand what the world really is. No, he says he comes abroad and sees them on the street. Oh, well, what does he come to do abroad? Uh, no, be, where, what abroad does he go to? Exactly. But but let's not forget so, that these no, people. Let, yeah, let me ahead, finish because ahead. so he is telling his uh, uh, highest authority that sent uh, Laurent Esso. Uh, Paul, the, the, the other guy, Gogomo, yes. and all the people that they sent to the diaspora, he sent them to come and meet those street uh, homeless people on yes, the street. Yes, those homeless people on the street. So, so I, I mean, it is ridiculous, right? Yes, it is ridiculous, but what is also ridiculous is how much money is being sent home by these people who live on the street. Yes, last I, year it was 586 billion billion CFA. Yes, and 2.1 billion francs, I think. Uh, no, dollars. 2.1 yes. billion dollars. Yes, so it is more than whatever the Republic got from the IMF with all strings attached to the loans. So, the, I mean, the people who are living on the streets are really doing... If these street... If that's what me, if that's what living on the street means, then we want to live on the no, street, we don't we? No, we like to live on the streets. Yes. yes, yes. But you see, all of this is... They live on lies. And our people are not buying it because our people have families abroad. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they did everything to chase a lot of us not to be in the territory, so we went abroad. So I, I can say a very good percentage of the families of Ambazonia have children abroad. And they know what those children do to make their families stay together. They know what they do to, to, make, to, to provide them a livable life because La Republic has refused to employ them. They've taken away their industry. They've made life difficult even to drive on their roads. So our people know what their, what their sons and daughters abroad are doing. And so when he comes lying to them, that's why the following day, what happened? He thinks that all those buildings in, in Bamenda and Victoria and Kumba and all those places that have been erected, they think that they just pick that money from the streets. Yeah, they pick it from the street. But, but, but I'm so glad that our people finally, finally understood what was going on. The following day, nobody attended. Uh, the, the ghost town was 100%. And today, there's no school. And but, uh, you have to look at the mentality of the people, right? You live in a country where there is no law, where everybody is the law. You are the landlord. The traders rent your property. And if the traders decide for whatever reason that they don't want to do business today, you as the landlord has the audacity to come and put locks, pad locks on their doors because they refuse to open their sheds. No, but it's not even don't, even, don't even go that far. I think in a democratic society where the government derives its powers from the people, they listen to the people. If traders say they don't want to go to the market, ask them why and address it. If children say they're not going to school, ask them why and address it. If there are ghost towns, ask the population why and address it. It's only a government that is installed by a foreign force and, and, it, and they get their, their, their power from that foreign force that, that behaves the way they do. And I, and I can tell you one thing. They are going to be out of Ambazonia and if they continue to stick there for too long, they will lose even La Republic to Cameroon. Because one of the, I'm going to skip one of the things I was going to say here and say that one of the things that uh, they're trying to do now is ban SCBC. Mm -hmm. Because of the truth that is coming through SCBC and finally our people are realizing that they have been living in the dark ages led by, uh, by, by people who are designed to be against them. Do you know who wants to ban SCBC TV? Well, the Minister of Communication in La Republic, the Cameroon, Isa Chiroma. And do you remember that there was one time that he laughed that he did not even watch that, that TV? Uh, no, he watches it. Let me, let me tell you who else watches it. The governor of I think all the governors do have, but I know for sure that the governor of the southwest region of Ambazonia 
has it installed both at home and in the office so he's soaking it all the time and so keep listening because uh what you what you will learn there when you go back and stop serving people who are against your own people you actually help your country also free itself and and just to tell you how different scb tv is from the cr tv that they want our people to watch some of the people that we profile on our shows are not in line with the editorial policy of uh, scb tv because stv tv is there to give pure information on what the republic is doing to us and how we need to separate ourselves from the republic scb tv has covered people like Munzu and all the federalists who say there is actually nothing wrong with the republic We've given them we've given them prime time life. Yes, we give them prime time life because we want the people to be able to see and judge for themselves. Yes. We don't decide what you get to watch, but we present all the facts to you so that you can judge for yourself. Last week in Washington DC, there was a, a support match that was organized by some citizens of the Republic at their embassy. And there was a counter demonstration of Southern Cameroonians who were there to shame them and show the world what the Republic has been doing to the Southern Cameroons. Mm -hmm. They organized that because they said they were desecrating the, the, the symbols and emblems of the Republic. If you watch the coverage of that incident on CRTV, you did not see the, um, uh, you did the not Southern see on, their side. on the other side who were demonstrating. Yes. They turned their camera only to the, the like, public people who were dancing in front of the embassy. Yes. So that is the kind. Of, so if you were just paying attention to CRTV, you would not know that there was a larger crowd on the other was, side. There was a larger crowd on that side, countered, yes. and the police was in between them. The police put a, a police rope so that everybody stays on their own side, and you can demonstrate peacefully. We in the Southern Cameroon Broadcasting TV. We cover it because we want to present the facts. The facts don't lie, and the people can judge for themselves what those facts are. And you know, when they do that, they treat our, our citizens as though they're kids or they're dumb. Exactly. Our people know that. Okay? But you talked about symbols, right? They do not want to show the Ambazonian flag. The Ambazonian flag is, a, is designed by Ambazonians. Maybe the people of the Republic do not know. That green, red, yellow that they carry was designed by the French. Okay, it was not designed by anybody in La Republic. It was designed by the French, gave it to them, gave their money to them, and then gave them their motto, Peace, Work, Fatherland. In that Peace, Work, Fatherland, that Peace, Work, Fatherland comes pretty much after a policy, after a motto that when, when the Germans colonized France, they gave France. They took away justice and liberty from the French motto and gave them uh, something similar. I'm going to hold a social show where, where you actually get to know what... what that what the French transferred to its colonies and definitely to La Republic is exactly what Nazi Germany gave them and taught them how to do this Calais Calais and all that. All those come from Nazi practice. So the green, yellow, red, yellow that they carry and fly around and think it's their flag. No, it was designed by the Frenchman and gave it to you. So please discard that thing and go and design a flag that you can actually say this is our flag because the flag you're carrying is a Frenchman flag and until you get that away, you'll never get the French out of your lives. And you keep going behind because you you do know that they took a survey of all the countries in africa and francophone countries are at the tail bottom yeah they are they're not developing why because france is taking their resources to develop themselves our neighbors uh, right next door nigeria um la republic cannot come close to them well, and i think the people watch the, the football match that la republic played versus nigeria yes that is a state yeah, by Ikum, Ikum, yeah. In, in Nigeria. Yes. And that there is no place in La Republic that can compare to that little state. And it's just it wasn't like that a few years ago. No. Because the governor of that state is determined to transform the state and make its people and the the, 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 the state itself welcome into the world. Now you can go and play a, a football match there and, 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 and enjoy it. A world class football match yeah. in a world class stadium. In a world class stadium. Yes. There is no way in La Republic where you can go. Even if a, a player collapses on the field, there is no hospital where you can go to. So these people should stop lying to themselves and face their reality. Well, it is not even our problem. You know, those are their problems. 
we are trying to build our country like that governor has just built that state. It didn't take people from from space to come and do that. That is somewhere that lives in that country and has transformed that state into a modern state and we are going to do that in our own country. Yes, I'm glad you said that because I was just waiting for you to finish and I'll say that immediately we kick all these people and we're going to kick them out soon. Within 10 years, we'll transform ourselves. We'll transform our roads from Victoria to, to Nkambe and then to the, to the other branches that cover that, 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 that road that, that goes up to become the ring road. You know what I'm saying? We're going to transform that and we're going to transform our country into, into, into something else. Because, and, and I want to say this. You know, our country, Ambazonia, when you travel between La Republic and Nigeria, it is one of the least developed parts of that area. For one reason, that for over 100 years, we've been ruled by foreigners. We were first ruled by the Germans, then the British, who took Nigerians to, to rule us, and then they gave our sovereignty to La Republic, which took its primitive citizens to come and be running, uh, to, come and make, to come and make our land become a job opportunity for them. One of the reasons why they can't, why they don't, why they bring in francophone teacher, I was just listening to somebody explain to me why these people are having francophone teachers come to our classrooms to teach us and are failing horribly. They were saying that what happened was that, and I think this is a scheme that they designed, that they went to the mission schools and told them that increase the salaries of your teachers, we're going to make up for the difference. So they increased the salaries, they did not make up the difference, and so the, the, the schools, the, the mission schools ended up closing their teacher training colleges and, 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 and some of the places where they recruit. I haven't verified that story, but that's what I heard was happening. So there's a, there's, they've been building a house of cards, and that's how the house of cards has come crumbling down. We need to get them out of our land and, and rebuild our own land for ourselves. And I want to add something else before I go to the next topic. That for the last 100 years, we have been dehumanized. Because you cannot, you cannot be... Because human, what makes humans humans is the liberty that allows them to go and multiply like the Bible says. So what has been happening is that other people have come to use us as a tool of their, of their own multiplication. And so they, in order to do that, they have to suppress our own liberty, suppress our own creativity, and all of that comes within our sovereignty. Our sovereignty is meant to protect our humanity. And so when people still talk about federalism today, we've already tried that for 56 years, and because we did not have our sovereignty, we don't have our humanity. Now, let's, we've been talking about schools and La Republique, preventing schools from happening or uh, like the public pushing schools from happening so so and this really comes down to what is the struggle about why is like the public wanting schools to start why why do they why are they so particular that schools should start there's a reason why can you imagine one well the the reason they want schools to start is because they want everything to go back business as usual you know, the school thing is something that does not sit well with any person in the international community. So La Republic is getting a very bad press from wherever they go, as far as these schools not going, children sitting at home are not going to school. So they are doing everything that if they can get these schools to go, then all the problems would have been solved then people don't really have anything to complain about. And then they can come in now and make sure that those whom they suspect that were behind all of these things, they will then take them and make sure that they, 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 they treat them like... They, 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 maybe the people that you saw at the, that their deten detention place in Yaoundé, you would not, it would be worse than that. So the reason they are pushing for schools to go back is because that is the only thing that is aching them in the face of the international community because there is no way you can go to the international community because people know in the world that every person whether you are poor or rich wants to educate their children and if people can decide that they are going to keep their children at home it means that there is something that is really paining that people that they have decided that we are going to sacrifice 
the future temporarily of our children in order to get a redress to that problem. So the Republic knows and the world knows. So they are hoping that they can get us to go back to school, they can get the children to go back to school and they could go back to the world and say, hey, look, everything is now normal. Yes, yes. They, they are trying to get normality mm -hmm. and inside that normality, it means they come back in control again mm -hmm. and, then, and then without any leadership like they've already created, they'll start picking one, each of us, and, 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 they, and they descend to hell continues. Yes. But the other thing that they don't want happening, the other thing that uh, the schools and the ghost towns are showing is that we are, we are working as one people. And then come with the idea of Ambazonia and our flags. They, they see that we are mentally separating ourselves from them. Mm -hmm. We are mentally se separating not only our country, but also their people from us, their ideology from us. They don't want that. Mm -hmm. so, so they already see Ambazonia creating. They all, so so, so, so they, they're not, like Roger just said, they, they have obligations as a government. Bad as it is. Even in, in, in lands that, are co that, that, that militaries conquer, they have certain responsibilities to that population. And part of the responsibility of this evil government is to provide us education. It is very good that we have decided that it's education that we do not want. And I think a lot of people have spoken on, on the type of education they're giving us. You know, when I was in... You know, when we speak about the education they're giving us, right? I think from my own experience, when I was in Presbyterian school at Ziri, we used to have manual art. You probably did not have a manual art because they may have destroyed that before you came. Mm -hmm. Because they, we used to have manual art. Manual art means even in primary school, you start learning how to be a carpenter, you start learning how to be a blacksmith. There, were, there was a shop where you go there and they train you. So that by the time you, you're done with primary school, you can already do a lot of things in your own home. And then if you were to go to Ombe, you, you, you can grow and look, uh, my, my, uh, most of the builders in, 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 in southern Cameroons that could really compete with, 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 with European building companies all came from Limbe. If you go to the Nchotu Syndicate, if you go to Nanga, most of, that's where they get most of their technicians. When La Republic came, the first thing they did was take all the heavy equipment, downgrade it, because the French in their, in their colonial tradition have never believed in, in developing the, the, the local populations to be anything other than uh, a market for them to come and dump their poor goods. They are very bad goods. And so, and so this whole fight for you to go back to school is because you're rejecting them and those are the symbols of rejection. And the day that we go back without them out of our country, I can tell you what will be coming will be worse than, than we've experienced. Yeah, because, and you add on to that, when we were just describing what happened in Washington, D.C. last week, so they are claiming that you were one, but you could clearly see the divide, right? Mm -hmm. There is no way we are going to live with these people. No. If you went to Boston, I think when we were, we met with the guys in Boston from in Atlanta, he told us that they used to have a social club. Yes. Where they went and socialized with the like public people but that social club has crumbled yes when when this issue came yes when this issue came it has crumbled when the rebellion at home started and we started speaking clearly about it here in minnesota it is the same you know so there is no way the people after you treat our people like that with all the pictures this young guy who was just killed in kifem today for no good reason you cannot kill our people like that and then you expect us to come and sit on the, on the table and toast a glass of wine and say everything is okay. No, yes. it's not going to happen. That young man for sure was not carrying a gun, right? No. Because I saw videos of people holding tree branches running around the street with, with the corpse. You could see his, I don't know if it was his mother or the, that poor woman holding the child's head like that and looking yes. into the child's face and asking herself. I am just imagining what was going through her mind as she's looking at that dead child, 14 years old, in her hands and asking herself or asking her God, what has this child done to La Republic to be killed like this? A 14 year old child. And you want to tell me that I can come and sit down with these people and talk with them and live with them like brothers and sisters as they are claiming? 
there, there is something wrong with me. What, 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 what was the story? What happened? Well, there are different versions. Some of the, they, they said they went to this place because the children were cultivating whatever the child was doing, whether they were cultivating Indian M or they were breaking whatever law. Does that child marry to die? No, to it's not a death penalty. Because they were breaking the law? It, where does that happen? And you have military tribunals that are trying civilians. Which of these people that have perpetrated all these acts of violence and assassinations against our people have been tried in any military tribunal in the Republic? But, but police work does not include being a judge and the executioner, does it? No, it doesn't. Um, there's a show coming up by Ben Kwa where he he talked very clearly about if Paul Bia you remember the and we're going to talk about that remember the the thing he signed last week releasing the the, 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 the political prisoners mm -hmm. And then in that piece, he praised the military. Mm -hmm. Which means that Pobia is responsible for these thugs, armed robbers that he sends on the streets and they go around raping, killing, and doing all these heinous acts against our people. No, but you don't have to doubt that. Why should you think that? Because it is because of the praises that he gave them that you should be attributing that. No, he has been responsible. The reason I say that is because None of these people have been brought to account. None of them. No. Ever. The, the eight people that died in Mamina recently, all of the others that have been killed in his, in his detention, none of them have been held accountable for the crimes that they have committed. Not even an investigation. The rapes in Boya that happened. Nobody has been investigated. Nobody has been held accountable. And the minister will sit there and say, oh, do you want us to tell you well, if, it, if, if there is any investigation, it should be open to the, the, the people should know. Have you talked to the girls that were raped? Have you found out from them what happened? What kind of investigation are you telling me that you are doing? No, so, there's none. There's none. Let me so yeah. all of these things, they, 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 come, they end at his table, like the book ends at my table, like Americans will say. So he is responsible. He is responsible. They are... If, if the direct if the instructions are not coming directly from him, they are coming from the people that he appointed, and none of those people have been dismissed because of some of the things that they have done to our people, which means it all goes back to him. So we don't have to be looking for his statements to attribute all of these acts to him. No, they are he is the one assigning those people and directing them to do that. Yes, and and um um I've, I've already tied them that they are acting like colonial they're acting the same as the colonial forces but you should know that they are being trained by the French you know like uh, you know when I was when I was in Yaoundé I taught a NAM which is the military school what do you call it? EMEA EMEA and all those schools that they were owned by La Republique right? no those are French schools where they train their military how to control their colonial populations and so when you see these people carry guns and use them trigger happy with them they are trained to do that because they, and I, I know I'm repeating myself because they train them that they are masters because remember that there was uh, a police shooting in town here mm -hmm. and you know what happened to the police the police was uh, was brought to justice and even though he did not win the case even though he won the case, but because of the way the police laws are structured, everybody was aware of what was going on. There was a trial. Everybody was, extra, was exposed to that trial. There was a jury, and the, the decision came. What happened, happened. So if like, the public say they're trying these people, we need to know. We need to know, and they need to put a transcript out so that we know what's going out. No, what is they, going on. They, they are lying. They just think that we, are, we can just... Nobody is going to believe that crap. Nobody is going to believe that nonsense. There is, there is, nobody has that monopoly of information. If there is any trial anywhere, the people will know. I am saying that if none of the people who were raped have ever been interviewed, so how do you want to try somebody or do an investigation when you have not talked to the victims? Right? Yes. The parents 
that lost their children, the boy that was shot in a, a metal quarters, right in front of their house. Has everybody ever talked to the parents? No. Nope. Have any person ever visited that family to condole and send their, their sympathies that uh, the governor, whether he calls himself what, has he visited any of those families to tell them that we are sorry that you lost your children? No. So these are people who don't care about us. And you talked about the training. I don't even think that it's about training because I can give you an example. Thomas Sankara went to that school in mm -hmm. Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. And that is not how Thomas Sankara treated his people. No. These are people that just see us that we are beneath anything. It doesn't matter whether you went to EMEA or not. These stupid people who were demonstrating in, uh, in, uh, in Washington, D.C., did you see any of them, for the sake of humanity, come out and condemn those killings in Bamenda? No, because they see us that we are just nothing. We are something that they can just dispose of. So it is their <coughs> mindset. That is how they have been indoctrinated. And you don't have to go to EMEA to get that kind of... That is how they have been raised. It is like in this country, in, in, in people, the, 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 the white people raise their children to look at black people as half human. It is that kind of indoctrination that these La Republic people give their children. They see Bamenda people as, oh, any stupid thing that happens in your life, you are Bamenda. Because Bamenda people are stupid. Do, well, you, do you have to go to a military school to get that, that training? No, it is indoctrination. It, it, well, it, it, it's, it's coming, it, it comes down to the same thing. You know, for every law that's an exception, I think our appeal to, 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 um, to, the, to, to La Republic, to Paul Bia, to the appointed governor. You see, when you said the governor should go and visit, I just laughed because he's an appointed person. He was never elected by anyone to be a governor. Uh, but but they parade in the place like colonial masters passing orders, even wearing military uniforms. You know what I'm saying? So that is um, where I am saying that they lack basic human decency. No, but 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 don't forget that the education that Francophones, that citizens of La Republique du Cameroon, and all France Afrique citizens have, is is education prescribed by the French. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give them education that empowers its citizens. It, they give them an inferior education that is based on lies. And that's why citizens of La Republic believe that, that we were, that uh, Ambazonia was part of their territory that was reclaimed. And I've already argued here, Ambazonia has never, ever been part of La Republic du Cameroon. Ambazonia was part of a German territory which they lost, and the French were part of breaking up those territories and giving them to go and be their own territory. We're never part of La Republic. We have never spoken French, okay? Bafut has never been anything connected with Douala people, okay? They were only done that, they were, they were only connected by Germans, and, it only, and I think it was only for a few years. And in fact, Boya used to be the capital of, of German Cameroon and also Togo. But Togo cannot come and claim Boya today to be part of its territory. So they give them false education, and when you, when you don't learn that one and one is two, and you think that one and one is three, you will never accomplish anything. So that is the false education that they give these people, and they act on it. You know what I'm saying? And because they act on it, they don't have results. But people like Sankara that you're talking, because humans are not only made by the education that they are trained, they're also made by their common sense. And so our appeal to the poor beers, to the ahijos, to the, to the military, to, uh, uh, to Ndumunji, to the governors, appointed governors, is that they should wake up from the, from, from the, from the French Kool-Aid that they've drank. Because they're dying from that Kool-Aid and they're killing their own people from that Kool-Aid. Okay? You know, Ndumunji, if he was living in a free Ambazonia, right, mm -hmm. he would actually have a job where he has respect, where he actually uh, gives command and people listen. Okay, where he doesn't have to kiss somebody's ass in order to have that job and then have to go and, and, and force people to, to do that he's doing his job, to show that he's doing his job. But no, okay, he, he, so, 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 so being a delegate, a government delegate, you're not a human being because you're not working in a system that works by reason. You're working in a command system. It's a patronage system. 
So you in Dumunji, you can never go and sue Paul B in any court and say, hey, you, you did not treat me well. You know, when you're not treated well at your job here, what can you do? You can go to court, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody fires you because they say uh, that you're a foreigner or you're black or you're gay or you're a woman, you can take that business to court and you win and they pay you a lot of money because it's a meritorious system, it's ruled by laws and, and there's a reason for things. It's a governed society, it's a, rule, it's a, a society of laws. Cameroon is a patronage system where you have to kiss somebody's ass and kiss even double in order to get something that you actually do deserve. So the people, what I want, I'm appealing to the people, you are appealing to uh, the Indomos, I'm appealing to the people that they should see these people for who they are. There is no way you can sit down and break bread with these people. There is no way. Because these people don't have any interest of yours. They are all out there to grab everything that you have, even to the least. They will take it from you. Yes. So don't think that there shall ever come a time that we will sit on one table and sing kumbaya and bread bread with these people. No. Nope. It is over. Yeah. Um, so the only in, in order to close this, this this segment, I think we need to emphasize that that to our people that we are fighting colonialism. It's the same as we are fighting slavery. Because colonialism was a successor of slavery and, uh, uh, and, and more efficient than slavery because with slaves they used to carry them, pay transportation across the ocean and then enslave them in another land. With, with, with the colonization they actually came and enslaved us on our land. Uh, you know they used to say that people from the Republic ran into our territory because they used to run from Njogmansi. Njogmansi is forced labor. So, so we, that, that's who is ruling you. That's who Ndumunji represents. That's who the governor represents. That's who the, the, the gendarmes and the police that you see on our street, they represent a foreign force because we have never fought and broken that, 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 uh, that chain. We've never, and that's what you're fighting for now. And in this fight, the only things, the only instruments we have is not going to school to show our resistance, honoring the ghost towns to show our resistance, and those are building a togetherness with us. We have our SCBC, which is bringing us information. We have our WhatsApp, through which we communicate. We don't have a godfather, and we don't have a standing army. So these are the only things we have, and they are working. They are working so beautifully that, you know, the whole of last week, there was a, there was a whole international press covering our, our events. Uh, the BBC, the VOA, uh, the, even the French, uh, uh, French news, Deutsche Welle, they were all covering our events. Partly because of the resistance we've been putting, you know, when Dumunji laughs at people in the diaspora, I think, I think he's, he's actually doing that in order to undermine and he's trying to undermine because we have been very, very effective, not only on the ground, but also abroad. Uh, I'm sure that when 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 the when our citizens in in london were in front of the colonial embassy of la republic singing amba amba ambazonia and all those police that came there i'm sure they called 10 downing street and they asked what was going on and another thing that happened when i talk about about we have our androids remember the picture that that showed uh, those people in the dungeons of La Republic. You know that picture went worldwide. Mm -hmm. The BBC covered it. Uh, Yahoo News covered it. I'm just mentioning those that I even took time. But, but, but so what we are doing, we are succeeding. And La Republic, even the UN, even the UN came out and was saying that uh, they're ready to, 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 to host dialogues, right? Mm -hmm. All of that is not because the UN is now interested in our, in our struggle. Because the UN... We have been going to the UN since 1961, and they've been ignoring us. But because of what you're doing on the ground, they are beginning to pay attention. The BBC at some point actually stopped covering our, our, our struggle because they said, oh, we're asking for, for sovereignty, so they will not be part of it. But guess what? Because of your persistency, because of your persistency, they're coming back to cover us. So keep doing what you're doing. And the, the, the weapons that I say we have, we have no other thing else. But they are working. 
And if they reach a point where they're not working, then we'll escalate it. But we are never, never going back to La Republic. And so all this uh, dividing books, sending their troops to go and, and become a CDC, uh, CDC workers in, a, in Sacred Heart and other schools, is because they know that they're losing it. Now, as part of not losing it, their, one of their tactics has been to arrest any legitimate leaders that come up. Right? Yeah. They started by arresting SDF when SDF came up. Remember the, the Nyo Wakais, the Sam, uh, Sama, the lawyers? They arrested a lot of people and locked them up in Kundengi for, for a while. And then they released them. Then they came back recently, arrested the consortium leaders and locked them up. And then Paul Bia decided at some, uh, last week that I'm going to release them. Very arbitrary. Mm -hmm. As I've been talking, it, it's again, but, but let me say, let me say, I have a theory why Paul Bia released them. Okay? Mm -hmm. He released them because when he captured them, he was trying to truncate any leadership that can do what the ghost towns and the school absences that can lead us, that can that can organize us and lead us forward. But what happened was that because of the because of the citizens that have been dispersed, abroad took over and started drumming the same thing down through our androids. Mm -hmm. And then the leadership that escaped to to, to, to Nigeria forms Kharkov and, and some of the other organizations that are formed and, and then SCBC get, was created so they were trying to truncate our leadership but we found ways to create new leadership that our people are still following mm -hmm. and because they arrested these people arbitrarily there was international pressure on them everywhere they went to release them or take them to court give them a trial so La Republic started paying a price for keeping those people and so they release them they release them because they were trying to make them be an asset in terms of undermining our struggle but it became a liability for them so they did not release those people because they liked it do you have any 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 thinking about that no you're perfectly right um, they didn't release them because they liked it i mean there's a video circulating on the social media of this lady that had an interview with this Tonga guy on, uh, I don't know, it's Equinox TV. But she said it. She said, this has caused the Republic so much in terms of uh, uh, bad press, in terms of financial resources, and all of that. She said the government might not even have money to pay people. They don't have money. This is a citizen of the Republic saying, it is not one of us, because everything that we say is intended to bring down that like, that's what they believe but this is one of their citizens actually criticizing them for how they have handled all of this trouble she asked that how can somebody asking for legitimate questions problems that they have they don't have roads their schools are bad courts are this and that and you catch them put them in prison and term them terrorists and then suddenly you release those terrorists back into the population. And you know, amazing. It just made look that same day that these guys were released by presidential decree. In Kenya, the Supreme Court of Kenya ruled in an election uh, uh, disagreement between a sitting president and the contender in favor of the contender the supreme court canceling the elections in kenya so you look at the country you look is that kenya in africa or it is not in africa so when you look at something like that i sat that there and i said oh my god why did you join us with, with these animals with these people the british could not have given us any worse training any worse uh, treatment than joining us with those animals but because let me say this part you can you cannot imagine that in a country that is in the same continent as africa that are all considered third world countries 
that have the same ethnic situations that we have in La Republic du Cameroon. And this country, judges can sit in this country and rule. There is no judge in La Republic du Cameroon who has not followed only the instructions of uh, Mr. Mbivondo. None. And these people tell me they are independent judiciary? No, no. He's a, he's a, he's a... So it just makes that when, when this news came out of Kenya and this news came out of Cameroon, it just made Cameroon a laughing stock. Yes, yes. Uh, people that you have held for nine months and then all of a sudden you come and sign a piece of paper that by presidential decree they have been released. Oh my God. No, let me, let me say this, okay. There can be a presidential decree that gives a pardon. Right. Yeah. yeah that, there can be that, there can be a presidential decree or or a president. Even the United States can give a pardon to somebody who has been convicted. But you give that pardon after the judicial system, after the judicial process, uh, or the administration of justice has gone through and made a decision. I don't think the United States, the president, can come in and say, "Hey, stop that trial. Uh, I will free that person." Well, and the, see, they will go around and justify that that is how their laws are set up. Because I heard the Isa Chiruma guy saying that part of the, the laws in Cameroon, which are laws that they just passed, mm -hmm. those laws were passed in July of 2017. Mm -hmm. No, they make, the, they make laws. Yes, so they, they are saying that the Minister of Justice can actually stop the, the, the judicial uh, process. Uh, mm -hmm. Where in, no, why do you have a judicial process? Then, then why is there a judicial process? Why in the world do you see that? So these are people that don't even know how to manage things. But look, my people, we want to build a country where the law is above, no everybody is above the law. Yes. Where the law is supreme. Whether you are poor, you are rich, you are handicapped or whatever you are. You are connected or not connected. Yes. Whether you know somebody or you don't know anybody. Yes. Everybody will be treated fairly before the law. Not that you would decide that I'm going to, because I disagree with this person, I'm going to send somebody to go and pick them up and lock them up. No, that is not how the law, and then when you feel like it, you sign a piece of paper that they should release them. It was an embarrassment. Yes, it was an embarrassment and, and, um, and, and, not, um, and actually exposes what our people are fighting against. Yes, that is what we are yes. fighting for. That yes. is because we don't want this kind of a system. We don't want to be part of this system. Yes. Because that is not what we know. Now I um <clears throat> I have a I have a comparison to make and I have a judgment to make to pass also. In fact, that release the release of the prisoners have two other issues that I want to bring up. Hold on. I don't want you to call them prisoners. These are detainees. Yes. That it, they are prisoners of the Republic. They are freedom fighters. Yes, abductees actually. Yes. So, uh, thank you for that correction. And uh, prisoners will be in court. What with the uh, with the with the with the release of the adoptees, I have two issues to bring up, and I'm going to say that by comparison. Okay. Mm -hmm. When Nyo Wakai and the other SDF people were picked up, Nyo Wakai was a was a justice of the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and uh, it is my understanding that the Republic wanted to release him. And keep the others and he refused mm -hmm. he said if you're not releasing all of us i am not going anywhere and he spent some more time in jail that he didn't have to until the republic released everybody including him i have a problem this time where our high profile adoptees were very happy to leave court i see them celebrating at home and it seems to me and I'm only saying this because I wasn't there to hear what they even asked, but, but they shouldn't have left that jail without everybody being released. Because what you've done now, you've abandoned them there. We don't know the names, so we cannot uh, accept uh, uh, Mancho. Mancho BBC. So these high-profile prisoners who were putting uh, high-profile abductees who were, who were putting pressure and, 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 and gaining the attention of the world suddenly abandoned everybody. I have a problem with that. Help me. Yeah, you are, 
you see I took a deep you are perfectly right but I will qualify it by saying this you and I have not been in Kondengi we have not been in detention so they made a personal decision and the personal decision that they made is viewed by you and I now as a selfish decision and the reason I call it selfish because you have laid it out perfectly when you go to war as a leader because those people were the commanders they were leading the troops and the rest of the people who were arrested were arrested because they were following orders that were prescribed by those leaders. Thank you. Thank you. And when you get an opportunity to free yourself and you take that opportunity and you leave those other soldiers that followed your instructions behind, what they say is that you left a fallen soldier on the battlefield and you came home. You abandoned ship. Yes. So, as I have said, I have not been in Kondengi, but you have quoted people who have done the same. And, the, the, and just to add on to that, nobody is in Nelson Mandela. We don't want... That is a, I was going to bring the name of Nelson Mandela, but you're taking it away. Go ahead. That is a special caliber of a human being. But if Mandela had wanted, because at one time he was offered to be released from prison yes. and to go on self-exile. Yes, he refused. He refused. Because he knew that if he left that prison, if he left Robben Island, all the others, the Sisoko, uh, the Sisulu and all the other people would be in trouble. They would die there, yes. So, these, our leaders, Bala, Fontem and the others, they made a personal decision. They did not think about the struggle when they made that decision because they should have taken that advantage that, okay, the Republic is feeling the pinch now and they are ready to release us. And they will tell the Republic, I am not leaving this jail. I will be the last person to walk out of this yes. door until I know every single person that is held here. I want you to release every single person that is held here in Kondengi, release those in the Janamari, release those in Boya, release those in Bamenda, and release every single person. When I have verifiable information from my people that all of these people have been released, sir, I will walk out of this detention. Well, that did not happen. That did not happen. Uh, and the, the, the other thing that bothers me is that since they left there have been statements that have been attributed to them they have not issued a word i saw them go and visit the the governor the governor of la republic i even saw a message from tasa saying that he was bala was forced at one point to bar before the governor of uh, la republic and I replied to that message. I said, I am, I'm the who, I don't think I saw that gun pointed at Balas head, forcing him to take a bow in front of that guy. So those are things that they did for whatever reason they are doing them. But now it's, it now calls into question. So the people have to remain vigilant. They have not even taken the opportunity to thank the people that have been praying and fasting and protesting and doing ghost towns in order for them to be released they have not issued a state how many days has it been now no i was going to say that's something which will happen the first minute you jump out of that bus you stand there you make a speech the you people are the trying to to welcome them to greet them they just dashed into the governor's office you couldn't even stand there to hold all those people who had lined up to greet you to welcome you home you went to go see the governor of the Republic, the governor that had participated in your adoption, in your arrest, 
the governor the first person you get out of jail to go and meet the and, and bow down to is that same tyrant the governor that prevented you from burying your father it is that governor that you go and pay homage to after your release there is something wrong in this picture except I, I am not seeing well well there's something you said which I want to address before I, I, I address another issue let me say this okay anybody anybody who shows their face like we are doing right now fighting for our struggle is is exposing themselves to to be killed by la republic and the french okay it's not just la republic the la republic and the french do not forget that om yombe was killed by the french in a restaurant in a restaurant so when you say we have in never been to uh, yeah when you say in switzerland by french agent they've admitted that so when you say we have never been to Kundengi, no, by, by, doing, by fighting for our people, we are, we are accepting that we can end up in Kundengi, we can be killed anytime. No, that is true. What I'm saying by that... What and I so, mean, uh, let me finish, please. And so, what we are trying to establish is that if I'm adopted somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Say they adopt you and I. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow, I have a leverage. And I become... A burden for them and they want to release me i will tell them until you release roger i am not going anywhere because you don't get into this struggle looking you don't get into this looking to be rich or to be comfortable or to or to not have enemies right that is true now the other issue that i had trouble with with the release of of bala and the rest is that Ben Muna, who is their lawyer, came out and said they are for um, federation. And I was listening to Chris Anu of Cameroon Journal said that he called Ben Muna many times to verify the story and Ben Muna would not answer his phone. So he sent a social media message and monitored it and saw that Ben, that ben Muna read it but did not and still has not responded and so he was assuming that 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 is true and so if if they were given a conditional release that they come and fight for federation or somehow divide our people for federation i'm just letting them know that uh, when they were in jail a lot more happened to our people and our people have learned a lot more since then and they have moved on we are not going back. So if part of the agreement to release any of the prisoners was that you will come and fight for La Republic and evidence, especially by... Look at When Gojidinka was released from jail, there was no governor waiting for him. Mm -hmm. When Mukong was released from jail, he mm -hmm. didn't go to any governor's house. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's, it's very highly suspicious under what circumstances these people are released and if they're released to come back and be a problem for us i can tell you it will end up being a problem for them not for the people of southern cameroons no you see they i i, I mean and these are very educated people so it is not like they don't know what they are doing they went to prison on the basis for advocating for federation so if they open their mouth today and they're talking about federation I hope they are rearrested. <laughs> yes, because that is the same crime Thank for you. which they were arrested. Yes. Okay. The people with whom they were fighting, the people have evolved. The people have had different experiences while they were in detention. The people have seen the true color of the Republic and its citizens. And the people have decided that the only thing they will settle for is for a separation between us and la republic so if you are i mean they could agree with those people that yeah when we go out there we are going to fight for federation as a way to get themselves out right and that is my hope because i don't think they will be that stupid they have been following what has been happening 
So it's not like they were not they were completely cut out from the world. They were not in North Korea. So they know what has been happening. And they know where the people are. But they can go and join the Simon Munzus and all the people, the uh, Anglophone Action Group and uh, the Anglophone Dialogue Forum and all the other people. But we are ready to debate them every time, any day, to show us how that, that federation that they might, that they want to sell to us is going to look like. We are not afraid of that. And the people know. So that is why I keep appealing to the people that we need to be vigilant. This is the time there are some people, there are some leaders that they call in leadership transactional leaders. And these are those kind of leaders. They are transactional. They can take you, put you as a pawn, settle you for whatever they want. They do the transaction and they move on. And that's what has been happening with our people. Yes. Everybody who has come to be our leaders, they have, they have postures for us. And then let the public come and enrich them and then they go away. Yeah, so the people should know that we are not going to deal with transactional leaders anymore. The, we, every single thing is going to be determined by the people. I myself sitting here talking to you, I cannot decide your faith. The United Nations or whoever is going to come in and we will sit down with our republic in a round table as uh, uh, Justice Ayapo has said, and tell the Republic that we are leaving, and tell the United Nations that we are leaving. And we'll have a referendum that does not ask people to vote yes or we. Let, just hold with that referendum thing. Let me say this, okay? Um, we, there the, 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 the is no need for a referendum. Because these are people who, we had our independence, and we were asked, let, let me say one thing before I say that. All what is happening to us now, the UN and the British are responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Because the people of Southern Cameroon did not choose to join the People's Republic. They wanted their independence. They fought hard that they don't want to be part of Nigeria. Can you imagine, and um, Professor Anyangwe has argued this, that how can people... Who just for who just from uh, 1954 said very clearly that they don't want to be part of Nigeria, and that's why uh, they, they came and established our own government in Boya. And then suddenly in 1961, you're asking us again to make a choice to join Nigeria or La Republic. I mean, how many times do we need to say that we don't want to be part? Of so this whole concoction, this whole murders and rapes and of our of our daughters. The, the rape of our land, the dehumanization, the, the UN and the British are responsible for, the, for it. We do not need to take a referendum to go back and be our own people. What we want, if the UN is coming in, they should be coming in to, to organize how La Republic packs out. Because one of the things that happened with the, with, with, with the French when they pack out is that, is that they, they dig up your tar, they cut your telephone lines, they, they, they break houses, they destroy your territory before they leave. Oh, build it. Let them, if that's what they want to do, they, should start, they already started doing that. So please, if the UN is coming, they should just come, let them finish the destruction and, and get out. Because we will rebuild our country and we'll put a war between us and them. And they will be the ones who will be at a loss, not us. See, let me, let me so I So the whole idea, and I hear people throw this thing about referendum. Referendum for what? No, let me explain to you. You know, I have heard those complaints where people say, I don't have a right to impose my views on them. And that is true. I don't have that right. And I am proud of the position that I am taking. I am not apologetic for that position. And when I ask for that, it is in respect to the views of those people and to shame them and to tell them that they think that the people are stupid. You understand? That is how, that is how we were raised. So it is, not, it is to actually beat them hands down and tell them that the people are not fools. The people have seen enough of this stupidity. So they should not be running around telling the world that we are imposing our views on them. They don't want to be this. They don't want to be that. Let us give them that opportunity and show them. Let them go in front of the people and tell the people on what basis they are advocating for this position. So we are not afraid of that. You know, my brother, the slaves 
never took a referendum for their for their freedom okay what is wrong is wrong and you 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 you, you bring in the correction and, and it's done but you said something which is very interesting that i want to come back to mm -hmm. you said that bala and the rest were arrested because they were talking about federation mm -hmm. and you said that if they are talking about federation again they should be released and they should be rearrested yeah well yes that's so my question to you is this question is not really for you to, to answer, but I'm mm -hmm. going to give it to you. My question to you is, why is Monzo and the rest running around talking about Federation and nobody is arresting them? Well, I, I don't, I, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. Even, um, uh, uh, what is his name? Muna that you were talking about. You know, that, that is the, 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 one of the reasons that you were talking about that. Why does our Republic arrest people? Because their hope was that when they pick up Bala and all the other people, this thing is going to die down. It's going to scare the hell out of people. And people will run into their various holes, where, their rabbit holes where they have been hiding. Right? Yes. That was, that was their aim. So they picked up these people, even though they had not done anything, and locked them up for all this time, hoping that this thing will go away. So, they, so, so, they, so I mean, I am just trying, I am not in the public's mind, I am just trying to find a plausible reason why the people are acting like this. I am trying to be a psychologist. Let me say this, okay? It sounds to me that when an Ambazonian, an independent Ambazonian talks of federation, mm -hmm. it means something different. It means a real federation, which the Republic does not want. Mm -hmm. But when the Asurogates come and talk of federation, yes. They, they, they talk about the fake one that they put, put which, which led us where we are. Yes. So, so people, open your ears. Because um, if, you think, if you think the games have stopped, no, they will keep coming. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Well, I am going to tell my people that we are proud of you people. We are proud of how much you have sacrificed. We continue to ask you to sacrifice some more because we believe in you and we believe in the future that we can all build together. We will not be able to build that future for our children and our children's children if we continue with this union with La Republic. La Republic has shown us time and time again that they are not honest brokers. They will never tell you the truth I did make reference to the referendum question that they said here. I think some of you have seen it, where they asked people to vote we oui or yes. Where have you ever seen that in the world? So these people are not honest with you. You can never put your faith in these people's hands. You have to take your faith in your own hands and ask yourself, what is good for myself and my family? What will be good for myself and my children and my children's children? Is it continuing with this union with our republic or is it standing on our own and building our country like the state in Nigeria, Ibiakom, that I just talked to you about? We have the capacity, we have the know-how, we have the manpower, we have the resources where even a mother in the farm will be able to leave their farm and go do paid work be gainfully employed in this, our southern Cameroon country. So please, keep the faith, keep the struggle, and we'll see in Boya. And, the, the, and let me just add to what you just said by saying that basically the people ruling you are armed robbers. When colonialists came to Africa, they came to rob Africa. They started by catching Africa like, like, like animals, tied them, threw them in boats, and go sell. Okay? That's what people do with goats and pigs you catch it tie it take it to that market or, or whatever market. that's how they used to treat us and then later they come they came back to to exploit us when they left the british in most of their colonies they actually left the french till today they swore that they will never leave and that the only independence the people of africa will ever get will be the independence of france and that's why France still rules La Republic. That's why you still use their money. That's why, uh, that's why if you go to Yaoundé in, in the training schools, 
you have French people there in every ministry. There's a French man there making sure that the cooperation agreements are maintained. And so Paul Bia, before if Paul Bia wants to, if Paul, I, I already say, if Paul Bia just dreams of anything different than the French one, he's out. That's what Ahijo did. He started thinking something different than the French one, and he was out. They lied to him that he was sick, but he wasn't sick. So, so, so what you have among you is armed robbers, and all they have is not reason. That's why Paul Bia can't even come out and talk. They can't even try to appeal in their courts because if you try them in a real court, it will mean you have to produce some facts. That's why um, uh, Barista Boga is out of the country. He asks he asked a simple question. Show us the act of union. Gojindika asks the same thing. Those people are gone. So when you see people running around calling themselves lawyers and then they talk about federation and making large exposés about federation and then come back and go into the territory and, and lie on their beds, they're not, they're, they're not talking straight and they know better. So, so you're fighting, so, so, so you are fighting for your liberation. And this liberation is taking us over a hundred years to come. It's like this, there are a lot of your citizens abroad that have a lot of money which you would like to come and invest home. But you cannot come and invest in a place where a gendarme is, is the police, is the lawyer, is the executioner. In one, in within 10 minutes. Like, like, like the child that was just shot in, isn't it Kumbo? Kifem. In Kifem. He did not, he, he pulled his gun and shot and put his gun back and went back to his barracks, go back to his family and nothing will happen to him. Nothing. So that is what we are fighting. And if there's anything that is giving us energy to continue to do what we're doing and take some of the risks we're taking is because of, of your determination. We are so, so excited now because we know that the human being, no, there's no other animal in the world more than the human being. And when you determine that you're going to build a plane, you build it. Our people have determined that we are going to be free. And guess what? We are going to be free. Just need to keep doing this, the same thing. Uh, but we're not ending this show yet. Uh, but let me say this. Uh, the ban on, on SCBC is because SCBC, we may be repeating parts of this, is because SCBC tells the truth. Because if you have only the truth to tell, you shouldn't be afraid to tell it. La Republic has nothing to tell. That's why SC, uh, uh, CRTV, I hear that CRTV, their, their, their viewership in Southern Cameroon dropped by uh, 76%. Mm -hmm. So our uh, people are not watching uh, CRTV anymore. And I can tell you why you're doing yourself a lot of good. So, uh, so, so just keep doing what you're doing. Now, I have another thing that happened in France. Uh, I've been talking about France as being the mastermind France is the mastermind that keeps Ahijo, or that keeps Paul Bia in power, and through him, they, they create all these, all these guerrilla forces, arm them to the teeth to come and harass our people. Harassment used to be what works for them. If the Republic is frustrated now, it's because you are not afraid of harassment anymore. Because that's the only tool they had. And now with your androids, you've made the world see what they do, and they can't even use them anymore. So they are very, very, they are in a very tight place. So Macron. This is a piece of news. Macron forms what he calls uh, a council for Africa. You know, when Macron came, people thought he was a, he was a child who was born when Bia was in power, right? Mm -hmm. That he was going to bring something new to, to the French colonial state in Africa. But now he's forming an, uh, an African council to be advising him how to manipulate Africa. The question is, can Macron form an Asian Council or a South American Council? <laughs> well, we have seen that movie before. And uh, the people in, uh, from Togo to Senegal to anywhere in, uh, in uh, French Africa, it is only La Republique that the people of La Republique are unable to see that writing on the wall. I am telling you, in Togo, there are activities going on in Togo right now. You, if you were watching social media, you would have seen demonstrations in Togo asking for the end of the, of the France CFA. So the only place where the people are still sleeping, it is in La Republique du Cameroon. Where there was one guy in Douala the other day that I saw he went and was uh, whiplashing the one statue in 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 in, in mm -hmm. saying that there should be statues of uh, cameroonians not french 
soldiers statues in in in, in uh, Bonapri, whatever Bonanjo. No, this are this are even friends. These are foreign legion people. Well, but that's, terrorists this, where they pick from other countries and send to come and kill Africans. They, 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 so this is what I'm saying, that it is only in La Republic that the writing is not on the wall. So he can form all the councils he wants. The Africans are taking him right in France. You know, and I hope they continue to do that. I have seen them on uh, train subways, riding the subway and challenging French people. That is how I've always looked at French people because they benefit from the misery of Africans. And it is time the Africans get on, the, on their shores and they insult them, call them all kinds of names while their citizens are benefiting from all the wealth stolen from Africa. Unfortunately, the people in the Republic are busy drinking too much beer in reaching uh, Brasserie du Cameroon and that money is carried to France. So they should start seeing the writing. If they don't see the writing on the wall, that is not our problem. I don't care about that because I know that my southern Cameroonian people have decided that this year is our year of the Lord. This is the year that the Lord has ordained for us. And this year is the year that is, it is going to happen. Our people have decided that we have had enough. We have been asking these people to do things right. For so many years, I have said on this show that you cannot be negotiating with somebody who has no authority to make decisions on the negotiations that you guys are making. Yeah, they can, They don't have a right. La Republic Corbia doesn't have a right to, to, to tell Southern Cameroon to go away because Southern Cameroon is owned by France. Yes. yes. So you cannot go and say you want to sit down on the table and negotiate with La Republic when La Republic does not own itself. La Republic has to listen for, to Macron and his African Council to tell him what to do. So there is no way we can go and sit and negotiate honestly with people that don't have the authority to make a statement on the negotiations that we are making. So, Laurent Esso can say all what he wants. Kavaye Jibril can say all what he wants. The Mbandams and all the other people. And then Dumuz. They can stay in the, the Republic. Yeah, and the Isa Chimura, you know, Isa, Isa, Isa Chiroma. That guy actually knows better, you know what I'm saying? And we know that he knows better because he's, he's said it in the past and it's on record. But, 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 but somehow, these people don't have the fortitude. They're not disciplined enough to act like the Sankaras that you talked about. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yes, because whatever he was saying, he was looking for a way. Uh, somebody said it very well that it is uh, Chiruma that undermined in one of those elections, that undermined the opposition. In, in, in a like, public election mm -hmm. in order to gain the position that he is currently in. Yeah, you live it. When the Chiruma. opposition was working for United Front. Yes. So these are people who are self-serving. These are people who don't have the interests of the people at heart. And we are sitting here in America talking to you. Why? Because we care about you people. We are not selfless, heartless people. If we cared only about ourselves, there is no reason for us to be spending the resources that we are spending trying to make your lives better in, in, in Southern Cameroon. I think our people know that though. Yes. I think our people know that. But let me, let me say something to Chiroma. That Chiroma, you're living a purposeless life. If all you come to life is to have a shelter over your head and feed yourself and put clothes on your back, and, and dream of nothing bigger than yourself, then you're not, living, you're not living any better than animals. Because the animals, God clothed them, and so their only job is to run around and hunt for, for, for food, and then go to sleep and get up and do the same thing and die. Okay? Uh, as a human being, God gave you more. The Bible says, or I'm sure the Quran says that somewhere, that go and multiply. It means come and make life on earth better. Are you making life on earth for your citizens, the citizens of your country better? That's a question you should answer. For me, I would say no. So please, use your bilingualism, use your education, use your experience, 
to do something better with your life than serve the French who are colonizing us. You, with your talent, you could actually be a millionaire. I mean, dollar, dollar millionaire with, with honest money, not stolen money. But look at you, you're mouthing French policy in Africa. You're mouthing, you're mouthing French, French uh, colonization of your country and your people. Please, I know you can do better. So, there is one more thing that I would like to tell Chiruma and its La Republic citizens that our people too need to see. One of the greatest assets that La Republic Cameroon has is its football, right? It's soccer? That's what they call it. Yeah. So that is one of their greatest assets. That is one of the greatest pool factor that the Republic has. The, the greatest Kool-Aid that the Republic can give people in mass and they will drink and forget about their misery. What is happening in the no, it's, it's going down. It's crumbled. So, I don't want you... And it's to, going down because of corruption. I don't want you to be in this ship. If a ship is sinking, are you going to stand in that ship and hope that, oh, maybe this ship is not going to sink? That hole that is sinking this ship is going to somehow heal itself and will stay afloat? Please, my people, if you had any doubt, this is the time to see that this ship is sinking we have to get off this ship we have to get off this ship and take our destiny in our own hands thank you